Hello everyone, this is Ed. Welcome to another Exchange 2019 video. In this video we're going to look at creating a test lab on Azure. This allows you to obviously implement changes, see what it affects or breaks uh, before you actually implement it into production. Um, in this example we're going to create another test machine and I'll show you the steps how to do this. So your first thing you need to do is log into portal.azure.com. On your dashboard you can click the three lines on the top and you can select virtual machines. Now in this example you can see that I already have machines running but I'm, we're going to go through the steps of creating another machine. So if you click the add button, just got to give it a few seconds to bring up the screen. We're going to obviously specify a subscription. If you have multiple subscriptions, you would select the drop down box here and choose if you have a page go plan or if you have multiple plans, you just choose them. Your resource group is basically a collection of items that share the same permissions, etc. Um, if you are new to Azure, you would create a new one. In this case, I already have one, so I'm going to select it. Then, under the instance details, you need to give this machine a unique name. So, we will call this Exchange 2019C. And as you can see, it's passed all the checks on, on Azure. The next thing we're going to do is to select a region. I've selected East US, but you can select whatever region that you want or you are based. The next option is the availability option. Um, if you want to have a machine that needs to scale, so for example, if you have web servers that uh, need to scale because of load, you create them here, but in this case, we're not gonna do anything. Here's where you select what kind of image you wanna install. In this case, we're going to install Windows Server 2019 data center. For Exchange Server 2019, uh, not touching as a spot instance and obviously the size I need to select a VM size um, now these are all pretty much created up because I don't have resources available but you would obviously come in here and select a machine for your test lab and then it would show here right under the account if you give it account name my test user one it again passes the validations. And next we need to enter a password that's a minimum of 12 characters. Um, and I need to repeat the password. Under the rules section now, uh, you'll notice that RDP is enabled by default and if because it's going to be exchanged, we want to hit OWA in auto discover we're going to obviously select those two now normally in a production environment you wouldn't open RDP because of the amount of surface attack on it uh, ransomware is especially big for this where they target machines with port 3389 um, in this case I already do have a 2019 key I select yes and I obviously confirm that you know to whatever they say here and obviously accept in the terms of using the key that I have on Azure then next we click on disks now by default your OS disk is always a premium SSD you can however um, select a normal one or a normal hard drive and if you want to add more you can add but based on that you're going to pay for every disk that you add Next, we're going to move to networking. Now, if you again, if you're new to Azure, you won't have a virtual network, but I've already created one, and I've already got a subnet in place. I just chose a default 10 range. Um, in this case, I don't have a public IP because I don't want to pay for one specifically. This is just a lab, it's not a production environment. Um, the rest I leave default and then I carry on next to management. Now management is pretty much if you want 
to have advanced um, diagnostics. I created a diagnostic um, group here just for testing, but everything else stays the default. One thing that doesn't stay default is the auto shutdown. Now, to save costs, your machines will shut down at whatever time you specify. Now, because I don't want to um, have my lab shut down while I'm busy, I click the off button and it removes it. Everything else stays the same. Obviously, if you enable other features, you're going to have to pay. If we move to the advanced section, um, you can add extensions. So, for example, if I wanted to add um, Uh, let's go look at ESET. If I wanted to add ESET, I could add it. Um, click on Create. Obviously, it's going to ask me for a license key, and if I have anything remote, any remote agents, then, or sorry, remote management, then obviously I put in the information here. So as you can see, extension files added. If I scroll down, I don't have a host group that I want to use. And proximity, I actually leave. And then generation, I actually move to generation two because of what you can do on it. And then we click next. If you wanted to add tags in here, you can add it. In this case, we're not going to do that. And next, we click. Um, under the review button now you can ignore this because we're not actually going to create the machine um, I don't have a machine Assigned because I don't have enough resources but as you can see that This is the image that we're going to use my subscription everything I've chosen in the beginning There's my user and disk networking management and advanced so once that is actually, when you click on next and create, it will then show up here and the virtual machine is actually running once it's been created. It takes a couple of minutes to create. Uh, it's not actually slow, um, depending on the region you're in. And obviously your connection, it might take a little bit longer. And then based from here, you can then click on the machine and it will give you all the information, your subscription IDs and you can download a file to connect to and then you can obviously log into the machine with the user that you created so it'll be local um, a local user account so machine name backslash local user password login and then you can do what you need to do now what we're going to do in the next video is we're actually going to go through the steps of setting up a domain controller and then once that's done, we're going to go to the steps of um, joining the first 2019 server to the domain, downloading all the files and installing prerequisites and all the information needed. And then we'll run the setup for Exchange 2019. Thank you for watching.